Yo, what is up, happy people? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Let me take this silly mask off. My name is Robert Arrington. This is my wife, Sarah. My boy, Austin Crocker, holding the camera. And we are on Florida's Turnpike, heading down to Miami International Airport right now because we are going to Las Vegas. Woo! We're actually going out to a huge drag race. And we're gonna have just like an epic weekend. But there's a reason why this all took place and how this took place. Very few of you know that I was a monster drag racing fan as a kid. Like, my dad would take me and Aubrey and Gabe and we would all go up to the Gator Nationals in Gainesville, Florida. I mean, from whenever I was like eight, nine years old, all the way up until I was 13. I'm talking my favorite time of the year ever was going to the Gator Nationals, going to drag races. Heck, my dad even rode a motorcycle. He liked drag racing. He was, my dad was an amazing dad. He still is an amazing dad. When I was 13, we're talking 1990. Hey, drop a thumbs up if you weren't even born in 1990 yet. But in 1990, I was at the Gator Nationals with my dad, with a bunch of our friends, and I watched my hero, Daryl Gwynn, win top fuel i'm talking racing eddie hill just as the sun's going down he goes roaring down the track flames a mile high i mean we're talking nitro methane dragon car as good as it gets that was like the highlight of my life at that time watching that it was just amazing well about just over one month later my hero daryl gwynn my favorite race car driver ever was in a horrific car accident while running his dragster in England. It severed his arm, it broke his back, he was uh, paralyzed from the chest down, and literally, I was crushed. I'm talking crushed, crushed. Like, I didn't even wanna do nothing. Never went back to the races. I was done with drag racing. Something that I loved instantly went up in smoke because my guy was out, down and out for the count. Now, skip forward 31 years, maybe a month ago, me and Sarah having a family day, it's Sunday. We take the girls, we go to breakfast, we went to Berry Fresh, then we go to the park, and we're sitting there, Girl, our girls love the park, you know, going on the swing, playing on the monkey bars, all the things that kids do, you know, at the park. Well, I, for whatever reason, pulled out my phone and took a look at my phone, and it said that they were doing they were running top fuel out at Palm Beach International Raceway. I'm like, I said, honey, let's take the kids and go out to the racetrack. They're running top fuel. And she says, what's that? And I'm like, I can't explain it to you. It's something that you have to feel. So she says, okay, I mean, Sarah, if, for those of you who don't know, Sarah is always down. I mean, if you want to do something, she's ready. So we go out to the racetrack, and as soon as we get there, J.R. Todd, driving the DHL funny car, goes rah, roaring down the track. We were, every, she's like, oh my gosh. It's crazy. Talk about, like, amazing, amazing. Then I think Ron Caps ran, then Leah Pruitt runs, and we go down into the pits. Well, when we go into the pits, we see uh, like a like a booth for Daryl Gwynn. And I looked at Sarah and I'm like, you have no idea, that was my guy. And she's like, why didn't you ever tell me you love drag racing? And I'm like, well, how? There was just, it was just a, pa a part of my past. And so we go over and we start talking to um, Daryl's mom and dad and some of the people working in the booth. And I asked, was he around? And he was over he was actually over at the jr todd booth at the time so i uh i said look i'm a youtuber i love to do things in the outdoor industry hunting and fishing stuff like that i loved Dar daryl gwen i was like i was his biggest fan like some of you guys say you're my biggest fan well i was daryl gwen's biggest fan and i said if there's ever a time i can do something with him please let me know and they politely said hey Leave your name and number and we'll have them get in touch with you, which is typically a kind way of saying, thanks for stopping by, go enjoy the race. Well, about 20, 30 minutes later, 
here they come. Uh, I look down and there's a lady I was just talking to, like looking through the crowd, and she says, hey, Daryl wants to talk to you. So we go down, we talk to Daryl. Amazing. It's like I'm talking to my childhood hero, and although he's in a wheelchair, he still had that beautiful smile. He had that exuberant, like, exciting personality that I love. That's why I loved him as a race car driver. He just was always happy. Dear me for dinner. <laughs> well, we get to talking, and then we started talking. And he he loves to fish, and he uses. Uh, um, hooker electric reels you know he's only got a little movement in his right hand but he can use that electric reel and, and he looks me dead in the eye he says have you ever been to the starting line I said no but I dang sure want to he said, follow me so I tell Sarah you better film this on your phone so we go down to the track right to the starting line this is no joke you guys I'm filming on my phone but I'm here at Palm Beach International Raceway on the starting line with Daryl Gwynn. You're gonna see a lot more of this guy and I apologize about the wind, but this is a chance in a lifetime for me. Okay, what do you think about this guy, Daryl? Well, the, uh, the driver behind the wheel, JR Todd, he's one of the best wheelmen in the business. But we got a serious headwind right now. Uh, I feel like a pit reporter. <laughs> but, uh, he'll get back. Here we go, game time. I mean, I'm like as close as me to that camera from his car. It fires up, it does its thing, and I'm in like all my glory. I mean, two hours earlier, we were sitting at the park, had no clue what was going on, just having a good day with family. Next thing you know, we're at racetrack, hanging out with Daryl Gwynn at the starting line. You wanna talk about amazing? That's amazing. Well, you know what's even more amazing than that? Two seconds later, he says, I want to introduce you to my friend, Tony. Well, I have no idea. There's a lot of Tonys, but there's only one Tony Stewart. We're talking smoke. We're talking world famous, legendary NASCAR, awesome cat who just got engaged to Leah Pruitt. So we go out and Sarah walks up. I'm like, babe, this is Tony Stewart. She's like, hey, I had no clue who he was, which was Sorry, Tony. kind of embarrassing, but hey, she knows who he is now. So, sure enough, Tony and Daryl take Sarah up to the starting line, and we they watched Leah go ripping down the track. Oh my gosh, so now me and Sarah are like, again, hooked on drag racing. The following week, we go to the Gator Nationals in Gainesville. Oh yeah, that's DHL all 100%. We got JR Todd pulling out, getting ready to do work. We got, we got Gator Pro in the house. <laughs> we got old bud, dad. What's up, Seth? What's up? What you doing, boy? Whammy. Well, here's where it gets crazy. This, y'all hang on now, don't go nowhere. I was over hanging out at Daryl Gwynn's booth in Gainesville, and Julie, who is J.R. Todd's crew chief's wife, comes up and is like, Do you mean for dinner? She's like, You gotta come over and say hey to our pit crew. We go over there, they hook us up with like hospitality badges and like treat us like we're part of the crew and give us a bunch of food. And we're we're like in the pits, like not like around, like we're in the pits. I mean, if you go to a drag race, if you go to an NHRA event, one of the things I love about it is you can like, they're racing over here and then you walk over to the pits. And I mean, you're like five feet away from the action. When they're tearing those motors down, you're like right there, which that's, that's the really, really cool part about it. And the fact that they produce about 12,000 horsepower and drink 
nitromethane, that makes them super duper cool. You ever seen anything like this? No. <laughs> Come on. Let me get to the point here. J.R. Todd wins the first round. <laughs> then he wins the second round. Yeah. Then he wins the third round. Come on, J.R. Hey, there you go. <laughs> and guess what? 2021 Gator Nationals. The driver behind the wheel, J.R. Todd, he's one of the best wheelmen in the business. wins the entire race. J.R. Todd wins the 2021 Gator Nationals. And we go back over to the winner's circle. We're hanging out. And Mario Todd, his dad's like, hey, dear me, you and Sarah, get up here. We get up. We're like taking pictures with them. They sign my hat, which leads to today. Sarah's like, that was the best day we've ever had in our entire lives. Like, like seriously, it doesn't get any better than that. I love fishing and hunting and crabbing and trapping in the ranch, and I love getting mud underneath my fingernails, but there's something about the smell of nitromethane that will absolutely go. Make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And, and your gonna, eyes water. Yeah, and your eyes water, but you know what? It's like breathing wasabi. It is so epic. <laughs> I mean, it tastes better than sushi, if you can believe that. Now, we're going to go out there. We're actually flying. It's uh, Thursday right now. We're going to be flying from Miami nonstop into LA or into Las Vegas, LAS, in case you're wondering. Then tonight, we're going to go over, uh, stay in a beautiful hotel. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get up. It'll be Friday. We're going to get up, go to the racetrack, check things out. Uh, walk around, see the pits, take some pictures, hopefully get to meet some drivers. I gotta be honest, I've been a John Force fan for a very, very long time. Uh, whenever I was a little kid, it was Daryl Gwynn, Bob Glidden, John Force. Those were my guys. And I, I also liked uh, Vance. Vance, Vance and Hines, the, uh, he drove motorcycle. Vance and Hines, it was a, oh, who ran the Vance and Hines motorcycle back then? Skipping my, I can't think of it right now. I'm so psyched to do this trip, I can't tell you guys. But, for those of you who have been watching Deer Meat for Dinner for a long time, you know I love the outdoors. You now know a huge part of my past. You realize how much racing means to me. I love it, and I also want to buy a 66 Chevelle, just in case you're wondering, because cruising around town in a 66 Chevelle would be pretty awesome. Um, I thought you wanted an old school truck. I, I want an old school truck too, like, like a 1950s Ford, that would be so rad. But I want a bus too, like Paul Thigpen. If you guys know my buddy Paul Thigpen, he's got a stinking bus with like 800 horsepower and will roast the tires. So I want an old school truck, a hot rod bus, and a 66 Chevelle. I mean, a guy can want, can't he? I've already got oh, the I most, want. hey, I've already got the most beautiful wife in the world. So I'm playing with house money, y'all. Just saying. Just saying. Hey, hey, all you ladies out there, leave a comment below what I should want, okay? See, you got it already. Besides that, you, hit the you jackpot. already got it too. And you, you still want jackpot. more, okay? It's called greed. <laughs> hey, babe. You just want a face that looks like that you can smile at every day, huh? Oh, my. Puck her up, big mama. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out and listening to that story. Life is good. And I love you, but that's all I got for now. We're going to jump on this plane, and we're heading to Las Vegas. 
drop a thumbs up below if you think we should vlog this whole trip, like going there, getting set up, doing and just and see it all because Austin's with us and we're shooting video. Love you guys. We gone!